Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe limiting factors in photosynthesis. You should then be able to describe how limiting factors can affect the concentrations of key molecules in the Calvin cycle. Now, this topic can seem quite tricky, so you may need to watch this video a couple of times. In the last couple of videos, we've seen the light dependent reactions and light independent reactions in photosynthesis. Remember that the light dependent reactions use light energy to produce ATP and reduced NADP. And during the light dependent reactions, water is split by photolysis to form oxygen. The ATP and reduced NADP produced in the light dependent reactions are then used in the light independent reactions. In the light independent reactions, glucose is produced using carbon dioxide. And as we saw in the last video, this takes place in the Calvin cycle. So as you can see, light energy, carbon dioxide and water are all essential for photosynthesis. OK, I'm showing you here what happens to the rate of photosynthesis if we increase the light intensity. When the light intensity is very low, the rate of photosynthesis is also low. That's because the light intensity will be too low for the light dependent reactions to function at their maximum rate. Because of this, the levels of ATP and reduced NADP will also be low. So the light independent reactions will also be running slowly. As we increase the light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis increases. That's because the light dependent reactions have increased in rate, producing more ATP and reduced NADP. And because of this, the light independent reactions are also running at a faster rate. Now, when we increase the level of a factor, and this increases the rate of a reaction, then we know that that factor was limiting the rate of that reaction. So, in this case, light intensity is the limiting factor for photosynthesis. As we continue to increase the light intensity, at a certain point, the rate of photosynthesis stops increasing. Now, another factor is the limiting factor, for example, the concentration of carbon dioxide. We can see if this is the case by repeating the experiment with a higher carbon dioxide concentration. In this case, we can see that the rate of photosynthesis increased, showing that carbon dioxide concentration was the limiting factor. We can explain this by looking again at the light dependent and light independent reactions. At very high light intensities, the light dependent reactions are running at a very fast rate. This means that the levels of ATP and reduced NADP are very high. So in this case, the light independent reactions could run at a very fast rate. However, the light independent reactions also require carbon dioxide. So in this case, the concentration of carbon dioxide was acting as a limiting factor. Now, the effect of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis is complex. Remember that a key enzyme in the Calvin cycle is Rubisco which catalyzes the fixation of carbon dioxide. If the temperature is too low, then Rubisco will not be functioning at a fast rate. So this will limit the rate of the light independent reactions and the overall rate of photosynthesis. However, if the light intensity is low, then the overall rate of photosynthesis is less affected by temperature. At low light intensity, the overall rate of photosynthesis is limited by the rate of the light dependent reactions. These are less dependent on enzymes and so are less affected by temperature. So at low light intensity, temperature has less of an effect on the overall rate of photosynthesis. Now, water is not usually considered to be a limiting factor, even though water is required for photosynthesis. If water becomes scarce, then plants close their stomata to reduce the rate of transpiration. However, this also prevents carbon dioxide from diffusing into the leaves. So in this case, the concentration of carbon dioxide becomes a limiting factor. OK, we've already seen how temperature affects Rubisco in the Calvin cycle. We can also see the effect of light intensity and carbon dioxide concentration. At low light intensity, the light dependent reactions slow and the concentrations of ATP and reduced NADP fall. Less glycerate 3-phosphate can now be converted to triose phosphate. So the concentration of glycerate 3-phosphate increases and the concentration of triose phosphate decreases. 
And as ribulose bisphosphate is made from triose phosphate, the concentration of ribulose bisphosphate also decreases. Now if the concentration of carbon dioxide falls, then less glycerate 3-phosphate can be formed. This means that less triose phosphate will also be formed. However, the concentration of ribulose bisphosphate will increase as less ribulose bisphosphate is reacting with carbon dioxide. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe limiting factors in photosynthesis.